Okay, this video is called Who Knows What? And this is sort of a big overview of health and nutrition. Basically, conventional medicine, it's kind of a joke, okay? What does it know? It knows drugs and surgery. And drugs and surgery, they can be very useful for an infection. They can be useful for a replacement disease. Conventional medicine is good at emergency room care. It's actually really good at that. And it's kind of good at some end stage things, putting a patient on dialysis, for example. Okay, but then the next thing is all the other diets are, are nonsense. You know, keto, paleo, carnivore, Mediterranean, that's all for chumps. So we're not going to talk about that in any significant detail. Um, the high fat vegans, yeah, they're aware you should eat plants, but I think high fat veganism is basically a trick. It's a way to get the population to eat plant foods because then less land is used to feed them. But they don't really want you to be healthy. The high fat vegan promoters, either they don't know what they're talking about or they don't really want you to be healthy because you're just going to plug up your arteries with fat. You'll avoid the animal protein, lower your risk of cancer, but you're still going to have tons of health problems. All right. All right. So where is the real big step in health made? It's done with the low fat vegans. Okay. And lots of people have made great contributions to this. You know, Caldwell Esselstyn cured all the heart disease patients. T. Colin Campbell said, get off the animal protein. But he didn't push hard enough on the fat, but to lower cancer risk. And McDougall, in my opinion, did the most. You know, he went through all the history of the, the nutrition and diet. And one of the big things I'll give McDougal credit for is he spends a lot of time going through disease theory. And you want to understand what causes a disease. Because the best way to avoid a disease is avoid the thing that causes it. And quite often, that's the best treatment as well. So that, and I, I highlighted that in yellow because that's the most big giant step a person could take is to go low fat, 100% vegan with no oil. That's a giant step, okay? Um, it's another step a little further to, to go low sodium. I think that's worth doing. McDougall, you'll say, well, I'll let him put a little bit of salt on the food because he's worried that lots of people, they simply won't eat a vegan diet if they can't put some salt on the food. And so that's a minor thing compared to getting off all the animal foods. All right. But then there's all these other things. And in my opinion, the low-fat vegan community is missing these things, okay? It's not aware of them or it's screwing up. And there's multiple reasons for that. If you run a business, it's not popular to talk about bad things. You might get shadow bond, okay, um, auto bond. Uh, so people don't like doing that. Um, it's also not popular to talk about the problems with non-organic food. Non-organic food's got major problems, okay? This uh, GP stuff, glyphosate, that's a toxin, man. It's a mitochondrial inhibitor. It's an estrogenic. It has it has endocrine effects that are not good. It promotes fatty liver. Um, there's real major problems with it, okay? Um, atrazine is a totally, you know, it's a mitochondrial inhibitor. It's an endocrine disruptor. There's issues with the BT corn. Uh, there's a lot of issues with it. I, I will never eat anything that's not organic unless I had no choice. Uh, so that is under emphasized by the low fat vegan community. The next thing is all these endocrine chemicals. I've given a whole bunch of lectures. There's, there's some prominent vegan doctors promoting soy. Read the old papers on it. You won't promote soy anymore. Okay. Um, and all the EDCs, they're in everything. They're in all the personal care products just because they're a great antifungal preservative. Okay, but people should be aware of them because some people, you know, they're eating the diet right, but they still have trouble losing the weight. I think that's a major contributor to that. And so one of the things you notice is down here is sort of my YouTube channel. And that's why I'm doing this YouTube channel. Some people say, oh, you know, you're arrogant. How, do you, how, how dare you think you could be the best doctor in the world? And I would say it's kind of easy. The only challenge is Dr. McDougall because he is so awesome with everything that he's done in terms of disease theory, in terms of summarizing the history. He knows the nutritional history better than anyone else in the world, you know, of uh, the original nutrition papers from the 1900s, okay? And now he's retired, so he's got all this time to read, and he's still going strong and mentally sharp. So I'll give him credit for that. But I also think I've taken a whole bunch of things way farther than him, okay? I've gone into more detail on complex disease theory, especially for the brain and whatnot. And that's sort of a big thing is he comes from an internal medicine background, okay? And the guy's brilliant. He's first in his class, okay? But he hasn't studied the brain the same way that I have, okay? Let's just leave it at that. And some of the more recent modern molecular biology, um, the heavy metal stuff, they, it's just not popular to talk about these things that much. He has done a good job of talking about aluminum and it's, you know, it's a major neurotoxin. And there's other ones that are neurotoxins like, you know, mercury and, um, 
you know, and iron, I've talked a lot more about iron, and that's that's another metal, transitional metal, but it's a major problem. Okay, uh, we talked about the endocrine disrupting chemicals, and now excitotoxins. No one else is even talking about this at all, you know. That guy, uh, well, let's just say excitotoxins are a major contributor to brain damage. Major, giant, and it's well worth one's time to be aware of that. That also gets one into the issue of stress. Stress has the effect of an excitotoxin. A lot of psychiatric medicines have a similar effect as excitotoxins. Other stimulants, tobacco, attention deficit meds. Uh, I would avoid all those things. Okay, uh, Walter, uh, water filters. There is a big deal. There's tons of toxic stuff in water, not just F minus, CL minus. There's all these endocrine disrupting chemicals, and then there's other chemicals in there too. So it's well worth one's time to, to know some basics about water filtration. Okay, um, you know, I've got videos on that. I have a whole house uh, carbon filter, iron filter. I got um, kitchen reverse osmosis, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, circuit inhibitors, mitochondria inhibitors. These are a big deal because they have essentially have the same effect as an excitotoxin. So I've had a bunch of lectures on that. EMF and Wi-Fi. Now, there's been some good lectures on that. If you go to some of these, you know, the better YouTube channels, go to like Chef AJ, go to Real Truth About Health, some of the other ones, they'll have some decent lectures on EMF and Wi-Fi. Most of the ones I've seen, though, are kind of wimpy. They sort of say it's bad. Okay, there's more to it than that. I mean, the thing I the thing that opened up my eyes biggest was it opens up voltage gated calcium channels in your brain. Therefore, it's an excitotoxin. That's really bad. It opens up your blood brain barrier. That's really bad. That potentially leads you to increased risk for all kinds of things you don't want, like autoimmune disease, brain inflammation, brain fog, cognitive decline, etc. Okay. Um, other things that we talk about here on this YouTube channel that are not talked about widely is, you know, don't get me wrong. I think some of the really good ones, you know, they're, they're talking about sense of purpose and a little bit about psychology. But I made the point that regular psychology is kind of a joke compared to Christianity. The psychology of Christianity is better than the psychology of psychology. Don't get me wrong. Psychology did some good things or some good experiments. I think you should know about soteria and the, and the schizophrenic patients. Um, here we'll also talk about raising IQ, things that you can do to improve your cognitive function. They're pretty simple, just developing good habits, having what I would call a smart personality. A smart personality listens to a book in the car, doesn't listen to beat music. Beat music turns people into idiots because it pushes sound out of your brain. So, you know, it, it ponders an idea. It tries to read as much as it can. Okay, that's a smart personality. It doesn't waste time. It doesn't watch TV. They would never abuse substances like these, like MG and ETOH, alcohol, because they make you stupid, okay? Anybody who wants to make themselves stupid is somebody who hasn't, they're wasting their life. They haven't figured out what they want to do with themselves. If you have a clear sense of purpose, you don't want to waste time. Okay, religion. Religion should be talked about in health sites. It's one of the most powerful promoters of improved health. Go read about longevity. Read about religion and health, okay? It's, that's a pretty obvious thing, okay? A lot of people are afraid to talk about religion. It's not sort of like the correct thing to do nowadays. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't talk about it, you're eventually going to lose the right to talk about it. You're going to be forced into atheistic stupidity, which will be a dramatic decline in your health, okay? We talk about art. Art is... It's sort of a beautiful thing that enriches one's uh, view of the world and, and creates joy. Why wouldn't you want to talk about that and do that? Philosophy, getting your philosophy right as a person to make you happier and to help you achieve more. And also to understand what's going on in the world, okay? And you have to know uh, something about religion and philosophy and history in order to make sense of current events in the world, okay? And we talk about freedom. Freedom is something people need to talk about or they're going to lose it. They're in the process of losing it right now. And so I try to educate a little bit on that, but that's sort of a whole big other topic. I only briefly will have a rant on it, but I don't, I don't systematically go through all of it. I wish I had more time. I mean, for example, right now I'm reading Will Durant's History of Philosophy, and it's like, you know, Will Durant was a good guy. He meant well, but he's kind of a lightweight, and he sort of talks about all these lightweight philosophers instead of talking about the big ones as much as he should. Okay, but so I wish I had time. I could write books on, on philosophy, freedom, and history. I would love to do that. I just work too much. I'm working full time. Sunshine and exercise. You got to get your sunshine and exercise. It's so much better than taking a pill. Um, and currently what I'm working on is understanding intracellular calcium metabolism because that's a giant major issue for the brain. But that's complex. I'm trying to put it all together and I intend to uh, share that with you in the near future. But I want to have it all right. Um, there's a guy who did great work in there. I'll talk about it in a future lecture. But anyways, this is the point I wanted to make. I saw on the internet nobody's going through all this stuff. I am I think these are really important topics, and I'm perfectly happy to go through them. 
And that's why my goal, and I'm not kidding, is to be the best doctor in the world, the one who can help the most people. And McDougal currently has the, the champion spot, but I think I'm making a legitimate challenge to be right up there as well. Because, you know, I don't have this for money. This is just a hobby. And I know all this stuff is important, and I know these topics, and I'm sharing it with you. And I think they help a lot. So hopefully they will. Hopefully this will be useful to you.